Let's say you wanted to do a running total in a table. So you'd go equals this cell plus the cell above. And you get a value error. The reason being that this cell is trying to add on the heading. So, little trick, you wrap it in an N, which converts text into numbers, essentially. But really what it does is turn that top reference into a zero. And then we've got a lovely running total. Great. But... If I insert a row, insert, table row, and then I put another five in here, obviously this is not a running total, and you've got a little warning, because this cell is actually now skipping that one. So let's fix it up, double click on there. Great, running total is working. But then you right click and remove a cell, you now get ref errors because the row this was referring to is now gone. Now, a nice, simpler, better option would be to use equals this plus the row above. Okay, I'll show you how that's built. Really simple in a second. But let me just show you the benefit of doing this. Okay. And I'm not using offset. And I'll explain why in a second. There we go, we've got a nice running total. And if somebody inserts a row, um, we'll put a little five in there, we now get a nice running total. And if somebody deletes a row, it doesn't break. Beautiful. Can also be used for conditional formatting. So I've got some conditional formatting which says where the number doesn't match the row above, Okay, so I put a two in here. The whole row gets conditionally formatted. Okay, or a three there. So you can do things like this. I'll show you that formula in a second. And as I mentioned, I'm not using offset because a couple of reasons. Um, traceability, offset isn't really traceable. I'll show you that in a second. And also in terms of um, offset as a volatile function. So when you change any number, on a spreadsheet or type something in and press enter, then offset will recalculate, which depending on where it is in the calculation chain and how many you've got, can really slow down your report. So check this out. This is an offset of cell A3, okay, minus one row. So it's referring to the cell above. Okay, great. So I change it, it changes. Beautiful. But if I then go trace dependence, I get a box that pops up saying, hey, there's nothing dependent on this cell. And that's difficult for auditing a spreadsheet and working out where what's dependent on what. So what about row above? Well, again, let me just change it. See, it's linking to the cell above. And if I say trace dependence, I get a nice little arrow pop up showing me that that cell is dependent on that one. So it's a bit more traceable. So how did I set it up? pretty straightforward. You just go to any cell, well, cell A2 in this example, and define name. Okay, you could call it row above. I've already got that, so I'll call it my row above. And you simply click on this, click on cell A1, and then you can press dollar, uh, F4 a couple of times to get rid of the dollar signs. So essentially it's there and I'm gonna make this sheet two specific. The reason I'm doing that is that I can then copy this formula into other sheets and it'll do the same thing. So it's sort of scoped to the sheet and click okay. So if I put a 10 in here and then I say equals my row above, press enter, I get a 10. Right. Let me show you how I set this conditional formatting up because it's not quite row above. So what I did, I highlighted the whole range and I'll do it over here. Okay, I'll just do this little range here. But before I did that, I actually created a new formula, not row above. I created a slightly different one. So define name, okay, on this worksheet, conditional formatting called row above first 
call in range or something like this. Okay. Then I clicked on the cell above. So I can go here, click on the cell above and just F4 this. So press F4. So you've got a dollar sign in front of the M. Okay, so there we go. So now whatever I do here, so let's say this is a 10 equals row above first call in range. Okay. And then if I do equals row above first call in range, and it's always checking that first one, okay? So that it's not just the row above, it's always the row above that first one. So then with conditional formatting, so let's say I've got a one, 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 okay? With the conditional formatting, I can highlight this little range here and I can go, okay, home, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and then I can say, right, where I'm in M5, so e equals M5 with a dollar sign, so dollar M5, because I always want it to lock and refer to that first column, doesn't equal, and if I press F3 to bring up my named ranges, row above first column range, okay, and I'll format the fill color as a gray, click OK, click OK. So that first row is highlighted, but if I change this to a two, and I change this to a two as well, that's how it works. If you found this useful, you might like my other video on table traps and talking about how you do fixed referencing in tables and other things as well. So I hope you like this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Share this with your friends. Like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.